Oh, everybody, Sir Stillwater. Hey, in this video, I want to go ahead and pick up where I left off in the Getting Your Village Started video. So let me go ahead and log in. So I'll go play. I'll pick the world I'm in. And our new world is this Langendorm, I believe, is the new one we created. You notice in that list, I had all the different worlds that I have uh, active uh, villages in. So I come into my village. Here's the base village, which is right where we left it off last time. Oh, look, you look. Uh, some of these things, these little five-minute huts are uh, producing. So I can go ahead and pick up the coin. Coin. Coin shows up my coin bar. That's great. Uh, let's see. We're 23 seconds away. Here, let me do that again. You do a mouse over on anything, and it kind of shows you where things are at in the process, time-wise. Um, so Memorial, this tells me I got 72 positive you know, smiles, if you will, from that. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, let's see, you go over a production building and it shows you your time to produce and how much you're going to produce. And then I watch, bam, there it is, the little hammer and hammer and uh, tongs. Tells me I can I can go ahead and harvest that. Okay, good. And then again, the, the huts, you see the hut recounters, they just automatically reset after you harvest them to whatever their default is. They only have one time duration, whereas a production building, you choose what your production is. Here I harvested my seven. My production building is idle. That's what the little moon with the ZZs are, a little sleeping moon. And then I can choose my duration. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do another five minutes because I want to really grind out some grind out some uh, some resources here. So I'll do my five minutes there. Mouse over here. I, oh, the plus a hundred. See, that's the thing with the diamond. It gives you this gives you a, a disproportionate bonus for something at its level for its size as far as how much of the map it takes. So, but that's that's the that's the part of the game on uh, diamonds and diamond related buildings so that's what we have you see the little people walking along the road let me zoom in a little bit zoom in yeah you see little people walking around they don't do anything they're just there for visual effect um, it's like the butterflies over here if you see the stuff in the upper left and the smoke and the thing it's all just visual you can turn that stuff off uh, so if you have a slower connection you can uh, not sacrifice performance for that to move around, I click and hold my mouse button and drag around. You can play this on mobile. I do not. Everything I'm going to show you is going to be on a, on a computer, uh, just because that's what I've always played and that's what I prefer to do. So, okay, that said, uh, let's see, the village. Um, let's see. I will go ahead and show you. Go over here to the build button. I click on that, and it shows you the footprint of my building, of my village, as it's, as it's currently configured. So this big square of, I don't know, what is this, about a 20 by 20, I'm going to guess? Um, that is, these are all buildable spaces. Each building in here takes up so much space. So you notice that these take, I'm going to go ahead and hit my move button just to show you the moving on this so you can see how many spots it's going to take. Like here, this little hut is taking a two by two and I can move it anywhere. I can move it off of the road and it breaks it, but the little broken road thing tells me it's not producing right now. I click on move again and I move it next to the road and it picks up where it left off. So. It's very important to know. Uh, sometimes you'll see uh, early villages that are just riddled with these little broken road things because they don't have stuff connected to a road. So um, the key thing is to the road so it can produce. Even if you're doing some design work, just keep stuff producing if you can. Uh, it's a good practice. Uh, trees, they just give you happiness. Uh, and we'll talk about the one by ones. That's what we call these. These are a one by one because they're only one square. Uh, they're nice to fill stuff, but there's a there's a downside to them. We'll talk about that later. And then here we look at this one here. This one's a little bit bigger. This is what this is a four by two, or a two by four, or however you want to refer to it. Um, different things orient different ways. This is up to be a two wide by four long. Some are um, four wide by two long. So it kind of varies by building and by era. And then of course your main building. That's the biggest piece here. Uh, it always. In the early days, it always will be. Um, eventually, you'll get some great buildings and stuff that may be as big of it or as big as it or so on. So um, the main building, they put it here in the kind of in the center in the back by default. I want to go and do a little bit of a rearrangement here. That's kind of what I want to cover in this video. I want to maximize my space because I could use any of these spaces that I can see. And expansions will get me these additional little blocks of, of uh, four by four. Um, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But... First things first is I want to make the best of my space here before I start building out and building um, coin production buildings and uh, production regular production buildings. And what do they call these? I don't even know what they call them. Basically houses. So, yeah, houses. And then production buildings, which are what produce the uh, 
give you the proper terms, supplies. So you got supplies, you've got coin, you've got metals, we'll talk about that later, and then you got diamonds. So, okay, so back on task. I'm going to go ahead and move my main building. I want my main building to be up in the upper corner. You notice I can't move it right now because it's red. It's because it can't, it can only displace one thing at a time. See here, it's blue. I could displace this. I could, I could place it here, and then the thing that was in its way, it then becomes a focus, and I can move that. And that's what I'll do. I'll do it again. I'll move it up to the corner. I always personally, it's a personal preference, I always like to have my building, main building in the upper right-hand corner, uh, top corner of the of the map. Trees don't need to touch anything, so I'll stick those down here in the corner out of my way right now. I'll move those. I'm just doing a little bit of a rearrangement of the village. Okay. You notice everything's still producing because they're in some type of contact with a road or directly with the main building. That's that's uh, key to this. So first I'm going to go ahead and stop and I'm going to harvest my coin because you, know, you always want to harvest when you can. If, so I go ahead and do that. I click back on build. To get to that uh, edit mode or the, whatever you want to call that, the move mode, I go to build. Up here this little menu comes up and I can sell buildings or I can move buildings. Or I'm not sure what this is. I think this is like store or cancel out if you're in the middle of doing something. Yeah, so if I'm moving it, I can cancel it and say, well, I don't want to do that. Multiple ways to do that, but that'll work for now. Okay, good. And I believe the memorial doesn't need uh, to be attached to the road either. Yeah, correct. If it did, it would show up with a, bro a little broken road. So uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and start and try to be as organized as I can because squares are the core essence of what you can do and you don't want to be wasteful in your placement because every unproductive square is costing you resources. So I'm going to go ahead and take, this is my personal preference, I'm going to go ahead and take all my production, my um, coin buildings, I'll call them, and put them together. And this is a coin building and this is a coin building. Um, and then this is the production building. I'll put my production buildings over here for now. You know, it displaced that road, see that? And then um, I'll just put that right here for now. Come back to that. And then here's a long house. I'll go ahead and put my long house. I'll put it down here in the corner because it's kind of different. You notice these are all broken because I'm not connected to the road. I'm going to go ahead and move some road to touch them. Uh, so here, now this piece of road is touching the main building. And then anything that touches it is connected essentially to the main building. So that's what fixed that one. I'm going to start moving these other pieces of road, which are all one by ones. In the early days, these are actually, there's no real value to these. They just cost you a little bit to build them. So I'm going to build this. And you know, this one's way by itself. I'm going to do the same thing. Come all the way down to it. Bam. So now those are all connected. This one's connected. Again, I'm going to stop and I'm going to collect. I'm going to click on it again because it's not product producing. And, and I'm just going to say 15 minutes at this point. So it's not, not in my way. So, okay, so that said, we've got some production buildings going on here. We've got plenty of capacity to build stuff. See all these empty spots? And we have, uh, we've got some coin and uh, supplies to go ahead and build. Uh, we also have forge points. We're okay, because we're, uh, we've, we're not fully at 10, so it's still producing. You notice I do the mouse over, it says added, another point's gonna be added in 47 minutes. If I was at 10, I would spend at least one of those forge points so that the clock can run for the next point. Otherwise you're just, you know, wasting the opportunity to, to earn uh, more forge points. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna fill in some more stilt houses because I wanna, something that's gonna continue to produce these. And I'm also gonna add some more supply buildings just so I can start cranking some, some core resources that you need for the game. So in this case, I look at my buildings. Uh, to get to that again, I went over here to the little hammer and the hand icon. Um, you see we've got the houses, we've got supplies, we've got goods and different culture things and so on. So I'm gonna go to my stilt house and you see my production rate, it's gonna give me a population of 22 uh, with 11 coins per 15 minutes. Okay, the long house, you have to use diamonds for those. I don't have enough diamonds, that's why it's grayed out. And I wouldn't use that anyways. Uh, and then the hut. Okay, so this is a five-minute production for 14. So I get less people. I get more frequent and smaller amounts of production. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, the math in this later uh, because we do care about how many produces and how many, how much production you get per square 
in the game. But that's a separate, totally separate conversation. And it takes five seconds to build. You see that down in the corner, 5S. That's five seconds, and it has to be connected to a road. That's what that bottom piece is. It only costs us 60 supplies, no coins, whereas the stilt house costs us 40 coins and 150 supplies. It's going to take a 2 by 2 square, 10 seconds to build. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and build some stilt houses uh, just for the sake of the example. So I click on a stilt house. You see it's building. It's a 10 second build. It's under construction. Magically in 10 seconds it will show up. And there it is. It, I just added 22 to my population. I have a very unhappy uh, citizenry and I'll explain that right now. Actually, let me see how I'm doing on time. Actually, I'm going to go and wrap it right here and I'm going to come in and talk about happiness in the next video. So please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, take a look at the playlist and uh, you can continue down this line. I'll have the, these videos numbered sequentially so that it progresses. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them below. Please subscribe. It really helps. And if uh, you have any thoughts on this or any of tips or tricks that you do and your preferences or where we're at this point in the game, please leave them below. We'd really like to, to hear that and also share it with the community. So thanks again, Sir Stillwater. Have a great day.